So let, let's start thinking about what we know. We know how to take the derivative of something like this, a number times x to the n power, then y prime is k n x to the n minus 1. That's called the power rule for derivatives. We know that if we have a function that's equal to the product of two functions, that we have usually two options. One, we could multiply the two functions out and try and take the derivative. But in the case when you can't, then you need to use something called the product rule. And the product rule looks like this. It's first times the derivative of second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So usually they say first d second plus second d first. OK. What else do we know? Well, we learned how to do the derivative of a few trig functions. For example, if y equals the sine of x, then y prime, we showed, was cosine of x. And then also, if y equals cosine of x, then we showed that y prime was negative sine x. So that's sort of a summary of what we know so far. So you sort of start thinking about, well, what things don't we know at this point? Well, here's something we don't know. We don't know what happens. If y is tangent x, then what's the derivative? Or what about if y is cotangent of x? And then there's two more, actually, two more famous functions, trig functions. y equals the secant of x. We don't know the derivative there. And then lastly, if y equals cosecant of x, we don't know the derivative there either. So that's going to be our goal today, to find the derivatives of those things. But in the interim, our, on the way to find those derivatives, we're going to have to learn something new. So before we can do this, I need to ask you a question. So consider this. Suppose you had y equals the following, 15x cubed plus 20x squared plus 5x over 5x. And I said, what's the derivative of this function? Let's take a look at what people may have done here. All right, so one thing that someone may have done is decided to try and simplify this first. And you have, you have a luxury here. 5x will divide each of these terms. So we can rewrite the original function this way. We can say uh, 15x cubed divided by 5x is going to be 3x squared, right? Plus 5x into 20x squared would go in four times, and then an x also. And then lastly, 5x into 5x is 1. So this is one option. You can simplify the original function first and then take the derivative. And we do that, y prime is going to be 6x plus 4. OK. Now, I'm willing to bet when you first looked at this problem, someone might have thought of doing it a different way. So for example, let's take this to a new page here. So I'm willing to bet that some of you may have done this. Well, I'm just going to use the power rule on the top, and I would get 45 x squared plus 40x plus 5 over 5 on the bottom. Right? Just use the power rule on each term and see what happens. Well, if we can reduce this after the fact, we would get 9x squared plus 8x plus 1. Now we know we have a problem because this answer doesn't match that answer. So something's wrong. Well, if you think about this first problem, the way we did it in the first case, we know we can simplify things like this. We can divide this denominator into each part of the sum in the numerator. And then the thing we got, provided we did that correctly, which we did, we know we can take the derivative of using the power rule, because we have a rule for that. It's on our list of things that we're aware of. It's the first one that we proved and know. All right. So this procedure of taking the power rule top and bottom and then dividing afterwards doesn't work. So this is, uh, this is not correct. So I'll put a big x through it. So the question is, what do we do? Well, the answer is, when you have a, a problem like this, you need to use something called the quotient rule. So here's what the quotient rule tells us. f of x equals, um, if you have h of x on top and g of x on the bottom, so you have a quotient of two functions, then the derivative of this thing is the bottom function times the derivative of the top minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom function squared. So it might remind you of a product rule a little bit, except there's minus in the middle 
And then there's also this extra, um, the bottom function squared in, as the denominator. Okay, so this is a little bit of extra work here. I'm not going to prove this. To, so I'm going to tell you that this is not the way I prefer to remember it. What I like to do instead is think of it like this. f of x equals a high function over a low function. In other words, the high function is the ones on top, and the low function is the one on the bottom. Okay, so then the derivative is this. Low function times the derivative of the high function minus high function times derivative of the low function over the low function squared. So when you say it fast, it's kind of fun. Low d high minus high d low over low squared. Low d high minus high d low over low squared. I think we're ready. Uh, let's use this. Let's use this rule here to get a derivative. Let me get off my. Okay. So this is the high function. And that's the low function. So y prime would be low d high, which would be 45x squared plus 40x plus 5. So that's low d high minus the high function, 15x cubed plus 20x squared plus 5x. d low is just 5 all over the low function squared. And the claim is, when everything's said and done, that we should get the same answer in this problem as we got in this problem, 6x plus 4. We know that's the correct answer because this is uses procedures that we know are mathematically correct. So all we're going to do is simplify this thing. Okay? So here we go. Well, this looks like fun. So 5 times 45, that's 225x cubed, plus 5 times 40, 200x squared plus 25x. Okay. Now, all these things are going to get multiplied by 5, and then a negative is going to get distributed onto them. So I'm going to do both of those together. So 5 times uh, 15 would be 75, but it's going to be negative 75x cubed. <coughs> and then 5 times 20 is 100. It's 100x squared, but then it's going to be negative, so minus 100x squared. And then lastly, um, 5 times 5x is 25x, but it's going to be minus 25x. Okay? And then this is all over 5x times 5x. This 5x squared business is going to be 25x squared. So uh, let's proceed. Here we go. So this term and this term can go together, right? And that gives us 150 x cubed, all right? And then you've got this term here and this term here. 200x squared minus 100x squared would be plus 100x squared. And then lastly, these two terms cancel out completely, and the denominator is unchanged right now. All right, so all we're going to do is divide these things, and we'll see what happens. We'll see if this worked out the way we expected. So y prime equals 25 into 150 goes in six times. There are six quarters and a dollar fifty, right? X cubed divided by x is x. And then twenty-five goes to hundred four times, and then the x squareds cancel. And wowie zowie, look what you have. We've just shown it this works. The, the quotient rule agrees with the answer we got by simplifying first and then using the power rule. Uh, looking at this slide right now, I, you might think to yourself, wow, why would I do all of this? Yeah. Right? Because this looks this slide is much simpler looking than all the math that went on here to get the same answer. So that's a fair criticism or a fair question. You know, why would you bother? And here you go. Suppose y equals, and you have maybe on top sine x, and on the bottom x cubed plus x squared. All right? That function, you don't have the ability to simplify it. So if you want the derivative of this thing, you are forced to use the quotient rule. So here we go. So low d high, which would be cosine of x, minus the high function sine x, d low, 3x squared plus 2x, all over low squared. Okay? And trying to simplify this isn't going to do much, because if you think about it, 
when you distribute the cosine onto each of these terms and the sine of each of these terms, you end up with no like terms on top. You could square out the bottom, but it's still not going to cancel with anything on the top. So this is an example of a derivative that's just going to look messy um, no matter what you do. Let, let's take a look at one more. So let's pretend uh, we said the following. See, find oh, the equation mm -hmm. of the tangent line to f of x equals, and suppose you just say something like this, 5x squared over um, 10x cubed plus 2 at x equals 1. You'll notice that there's no way to reduce that fraction, uh, so you are stuck having to do the quotient rule the way it is. All right, so you know that your line has this basic equation. And right away, you can go ahead and plug in 1 for x1. So this becomes x minus 1. And then you have y minus something, and you need a slope. So um, to get the y value, that's always pretty easy to do. You get a y value by taking your x value and subbing it into the function. So what we're going to do, do, do is figure out what f of 1 is. So if we plug 1 in there, we're going to get um, 5 times 1 squared over 10 times 1 cubed plus 2. And now you see the the nice part about having x equals 1, because really the numerator just turns into 5, the denominator turns into 12, so your y value is 5 twelfths. So we're getting there. We almost have our line. Problem is we don't have the slope. Okay, But we learned recently that slope and derivative are synonymous, and we can find the derivative, we get the slope. So there's our function. Um, let's make a note. We want to find f prime. I'm going to just kind of shove it in over here. It'll be a little cramped, but we'll figure it out. All right. So we know that this is the high function, and that's the low function. So you're going to do low d high minus high d low over low squared. So here we go. 10x cubed plus 2, that's low. d high is going to be 10x minus the high function, 5x squared. And then d low is going to be 30x squared all over the bottom squared. Now, you have an option. You can distribute things out, collect like terms, and attempt to reduce this. We really only want to know the slope when x is equal to 1. So you can simplify this thing, but I wouldn't bother. I would just say, all right, let's go straight right now and figure out what f prime of 1 is. And what's nice about plugging 1 is anywhere there's an x, it just turns into a 1, because 1 cubed, 1 squared, any of those things are going to be 1. So really, this numerator becomes 10 plus 2 times 10 minus 5 times 30 all over 10 plus 2 squared. So here we go. So that means that f prime of 1 is going to equal um, 12 times 10 minus 5 times 30 over 12 squared. Or, let's keep going, 120 Minus 5 times 30 is going to be 150. And then on the bottom, you have 12 squared, which is 144. So you end up with negative 30 over 144. Um, that does reduce both by 2. You get negative 15 on top and 72 on the bottom. And then actually, that reduces because both divisible by 3. Wow, he's out. OK, so what do we get here? Negative 5 over, what is that, 24? OK. So there you go, you have it. This thing is your slope, or we write f prime of 1. That's what it is. So we could take that negative 5 over 24, put it back into our tangent line, and there you go. So you have it. So now you see you can do all kinds of problems you can solve using the quotient rule. All right, let's go back for a minute, though, and remember how the story started today. So the story started today by us saying what we already knew. We knew the power rule, the product rule, and we knew the derivatives of a few trig functions. And we then said it would be nice to know the derivative of a few others, like tangent, secant, things like that. It would be really nice. So that's where we're heading next. So if, suppose y equals tangent x. The question is, what's y prime? And then sort of like a meta question for this that should be in your mind right now is, why did we go and do all this stuff about quotient rule before looking at this? 
The answer is this. Tangent equals sine x over cosine x. And now you're ready. Now you can get the derivative of this thing, because this we have quotient rule for. So here we go. So low d high, and the derivative of sine is cosine, minus high function sine x. d low would be negative sine over low squared. Oh, wow. Well, D, that's not a very nice looking derivative, you might say. However, if you look at that numerator, something very nice happened. Here you go. Take a look at that numerator. This product is cosine squared x. This product is plus sine squared x. And on the bottom, we have cosine x squared. Well, that's just 1 over cosine x squared. So that derivative simplifies quite a bit. We even have another name for this. Dimitri, thank you. This is equal to secant squared x. So there you go. So now you have one of those four missing derivatives. If y equals the tangent of x, then we know that y prime is secant squared x. Okay. So if we want, we can use the quotient rule to get some of the other derivatives. Okay. So let's take a look at another one. This might surprise you a little bit. So let's start with y equals the secant of x. All right? We know that's our, really the same thing as 1 over the cosine of x. That's the definition of secant. So if we want to now, we can do the quotient rule and get the derivative of this function. All right, so we do low d high. So the low function is cosine of x times the derivative of the top function. But the derivative of the top function is just 0, because the derivative of 1 is 0. Uh, minus the high function, 1, d low. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then you get, on the bottom, cosine squared x, or bottom squared. OK, so something nice happens. This part is equal to 0. And if you look at this part, you have a negative times a negative, which is a positive. So you end up getting y prime equals the sine of x over, and I'm just going to make a decision here. For cosine squared, I'm going to write that this way. I'm going to write it as cosine x, cosine x, because that's what squaring something means. You multiply it by itself. Okay. And now, I'm going to do one more thing to rewrite this. y prime equals um, 1 over cosine x times sine x over cosine x. All right. So this is really secant x tangent x. So if you were to look at most calculus textbooks, they'll tell you that if y equals the tangent of x, then y prime is secant x tangent x. And it's always kind of surprising the first time you see that if you don't show where it comes from by using the quotient rule.